Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. Mac Jones only goes for a sixth round pick. So first of all, it's it's 75% of first round quarterbacks don't make it. Uh, very rarely, Sam Darnold got a second team to start for, Justin Fields may. Uh, you know, Mac Jones isn't. I thought it was a little low. If Trey Lance goes for a four, and I'm not sure he can play at all, I kept thinking to myself, so Mac Jones was a high school All-American quarterback, a uh, college All-American quarterback, and rookie of the year his first year. How much of it is the dude can't play, and how much of it is this was a bad spot with a coach that appeared to be tone deaf to offense and a little bit of a grudge holder? Do you think he can play at all? Well, I was never a fan. And that was goes back to when the four in terms of drafting yeah. him really high, because when you draft a guy in the top fifteen, you got to pay him a decent yeah. amount of money. But there are a lot of variables of this. And first off, I like this deal for the Jags: six round pick for a backup yes. quarterback and makes two and a half yeah. million dollars. He got traded for less than Trey Lance, though, and he's accomplished way more than Trey Lance as a full time starter in the league because his contract, right? His they're not going to pick up his fifth year option, which is going to be well over twenty million dollars. So you're basically just Tra trading for one year of his services. And then you never know. Maybe Trevor Lawrence gets hurt and he's good and you get, you know, strike oil. I was thinking about this today, though, Colin, and this is why I'm a big believer. When you draft guys really high, th there is no such thing as a high floor. It, it doesn't exist, right? you like, this guy, he's going to be Kirk Cousins, or maybe he's just not going to be that good, right? It it's why I had no problem taking big swings on Zach Wilson and Trey Lance because the likelihood of the guy, you're trying to hit a home run no matter what. At best, Mac Jones was always going to be a stand-up double, maybe rounding second, looking at third, but he was never even going right. to be a triple. His best-case scenario is going to be a fringe top-10 quarterback, and that's if everything went perfectly. And I, I, I don't know. I, I just, it, I think it's very telling that Gerard Mayo is a former player, spent a lot of time around Tom Brady, has been there this whole Mac Jones experience. It's clear, like, I right. don't want this guy around. Let's face it. Part of Mac Jones was, okay, he's going to be like Cousins or yeah. Jared Goff. What do those guys have in spades? Character, focus. This guy was kind of viewed pretty yeah. immature, right? That, that to me, was a huge red flag that I, I didn't quite see coming. But that that came to roost really quick with some of his, like, come on, Mac. Let's, well, let's get mean, it together, listen, buddy. Listen, Jay Cutler was really gifted, and he wore people out. Uh, I mean, Jay is the best Bear quarterback in a long time. Uh, and, and Jay won yeah. games, but at the end, people just didn't like Jay Cutler. They were just, they just, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay said, yeah, hit the road. I mean, that's essentially what Green Bay did at the end. So if you don't have yeah. Jay Cutler or Aaron Rodgers gifts and you are just, I mean, you can go back and look at his first year. He, it, it, listen, he is a kid that played sort of in a pro offense down in Alabama with really good people where, so you can argue Bama had better players than offensively, at least skill position players than New England. I don't even think that's that's not even arguable. Well, he played with four wide receivers that got drafted in the top 15. <laughs> so, And I think what happens is, but his personality, people put up with a lot of shit if you're gifted. It, it, it could be our business. It could be the NFL. If you're not gifted, you got to – that's why most of these quarterbacks – are good guys because this league just doesn't this is not the nba there's no nine-year contracts like baseball and in the nba where marginal guys have no cut deals you, you just you just you're see ya hit the road if you're not a stand-up guy and i think mac came with a reputation that he was a bit of a brat i i was told by somebody i trust i was told this last year and this is somebody that is a great source he said you couldn't coach him hard you just couldn't coach him hard. Brady got annoyed with it after about 15, 20 years of it, but you could coach him hard. Yeah. Uh, like Mac, you couldn't. He pouted, uh, petty, and there was just, you know, it just that's what I heard. And when I heard that, I'm like, well, that's the wrong culture. That That's all they do in New England. But he came from that in Alabama. It's not like Nick Saban was holding his hand, right? So he, that, I think Bill always felt comfortable drafting an urban guy, drafting a Saban guy, because those coaches were in their players, you know, in their face, 24-7, 365. And it turns out, listen, we can make excuses for Mac a couple years ago with the Patricia Joe Judge embarrassment, and it was. 
But last year he had Bill O'Brien and he constantly was throwing the ball to the other team. And, and confidence is a powerful thing for any yeah. young person. He clearly lost it. But like you said, Jay Cutler and Aaron Rodgers throw a better ball with their left hand. He doesn't have a he doesn't have a very good arm. I'd say historically, a guy with his physical attributes, average athlete at best, very average arm. Forever, just because you played at a big time program, a lot of people, those type quarterbacks typically didn't get drafted that high. I think he's a third or fourth round quarterback in the history of the draft. But these last, what do you think, five, six, the quarterback inflation. And let's face it, Bill was really desperate. He had no That's backup right. plan. Hell, even when Tom left, he had to sign Cam in the summer. So Mac, did, did he truly want Mac or did he just need a quarterback in three years later? The other thing, and we talk about this a lot, the clock in football now is rapid. It, it, this is not, I'm giving you no, four or second, five years. Thanksgiving, See you later, second year, I've been told. By Thanksgiving, by the <laughs> second year, so you've got about, if you if you started your first year, you got about 26 starts. You're around there. People are making decisions upstairs. <laughs> They're raising their hand. or That's why the Daniel Jones thing is a mystery, because I think one person raised their hand. It was the owner. I don't think anybody else in the yeah. room wanted it. Well, it's why that, you know, the Steelers get talked about right now. Should they be, obviously, they meeting with Russell Wilson. Who Maybe they're a sleeper to sniff around on Kirk Cousins. It's insane. Like, they, they already kind of know what Kenny yes. Pickett has in the bag. And it's it's not great. And Mac Jones is worse than that because Kenny Pickett at least yes. can move. Right? Brock Purdy can move. Like, you, you got to be able, and this is why I was, like, adamant. Kyle Shanahan, you cannot draft this guy high because his – the room, the margin for error with him, like the margin for error with the physically gifted guys, even Jalen Hurts, like he can play bad and still his numbers look pretty good because physically he's pretty gifted. He can throw the ball. He throws a beautiful deep ball, can run the Herberts. Like Mac Jones had never sniffed those guys' yeah. physical attributes. Yeah, he, he you know, people uh, have rolled their eyes, you know, at the Tom Brady footage, dad bod, but at least Brady was in, looked like he was in shape. There's pictures of Mac Jones. He just looks pudgy <laughs> oh. and doughy and soft. It's bad. Um, by the way, we'll touch on this easy pivot here to deflate gate. Uh, so I'm through uh, eight episodes. So, um, you know, it's obviously leans more, uh, craft family than it does, uh, Belichick who, you know, listen, Bill ticked off a lot of people over the years. There's no question about that. And there's a price to pay for it. Um, but the one thing I came out after watching episode eight, if Mahomes had a defensive coach, who almost felt like he was had a grudge. Once Garoppolo, once Kraft stepped in, remember Tom went to Kraft and said, get Jimmy G out of here. It almost felt like the relationship changed. Bill was pissed at Tom, resented it. Um, you know, you can see Bill, like the old Parcells, I'm cooking the dinner, I want to I want to have the groceries. And mostly Bill did, but that was the one time Kraft stepped in and said, no, get him out. Even though Brady won the Super Bowl in Atlanta, it, it was almost a hostility toward Brady. And I was, you know, I was thinking Mahomes is more gifted. But if you gave Mahomes a defensive coach that didn't know anything, didn't know the language, uh, especially early in his career, I don't know. I, I think my takeaway after episode eight is Tom's resilience is remarkable. He got the verbal shit kicked out of him for 20 years. And at the end, because of the Garoppolo move is my hunch, Bill was just not nice to him. Like like all those rings and all that money and that legacy, and you're not getting that with 99% of the quarterbacks, is that I thought to myself, Christ, if I had a boss like that, I wouldn't last 20 years. I just couldn't. No, I, bad. I mean, if you're natural, and I, I've defended Bill through the last couple months of him not getting a job, which I still think is insanity. But if you're a natural curmudgeon, angrier, negative guy, as you get older, you usually don't get happier. <laughs> so I also think, listen, society and the world we live in when it comes to sports, because of the money, the power of the superstar has, football is never going to quite be the NBA. But Jalen Hurts talks to Howie Roseman. Patrick Mahomes texts with Veach and Andy all the time. And I'm not talking during this. I'm talking in the off season. You know, he, he, one of the big parts of uh, Ty Dunn's article was like, God, Sean, you need to work a little more with yes. Josh Allen, right? This is, you want to. Why wouldn't you want some of their opinions and be on the same page as them? You go as they go. So I, I think that's at the forefront of kind of the world we're in right now with quarterbacks in their front office. You want to be tied at the hip and, and be, I, I would say, just your relationship is much more unique 
than all the other players who still have the old school, a little bit of a widget. Like if you're not playing, we'll get rid of you. We can replace you, you know, beside what 50 players, in the NFL, the Aaron Donalds, the Trent Williams, but they're few and far between most guys. I- I've been in these meetings. You're constantly talking. Can we upgrade here? Is this guy worth the money? Can we draft a guy in the second round to get 90% of the value? And in three years, he's way cheaper, but the quarterback is not that spot. It's why you see, you know, Baker Mayfield get a lot of money because what else are they going to do? Kirk Cousins going to get a ton of money. That that position, you know, Bill, he became a star right in the 80s. I mean, you, you I, I don't remember it, but obviously his game plans against Bill Walsh, it was a different time. I mean, Bill Walsh was always trying to get rid of Joe Montana. <laughs> Bill Parcells, you know, him and Phil Sims were just screaming at each other constantly. The, the quarterback was viewed as an yeah. equal. Even with Montana, it's like, well, next man up, his back goes, Steve, you're in. And it's just, and that was kind of the world he grew up on, where I think Andy was right at that time in the 90s, the power of Favre, I, I think just looks at yes. it a lot differently. And that, and that's why you think, and you've been saying this, for the transition of this timing for him is just, it's the ultimate, it's perfect, right? He He's made for this era yep. of football. That's why he's kicking everybody's no, ass. He really is. The, um, you know, and the, the dynasty is, um, <laughs> the other thing my takeaway is that, Holy shit. The most unforgotten play in the history of Super Bowls. People just forget about this because of the Malcolm Butler interception. People forget that Seattle was dead. Russell Wilson throws it up the right sideline. <laughs> the announcers yeah. are like. Bounced off the guy's leg, didn't it? <laughs> it's like the great thing. It's like, I mean, it really is. It's almost the equal to Edelman's catch. But Edelman's catch is, as it should be, noteworthy winning team. Because of Malcolm Butler's play moments later, you for the, the if New England would have lost that Super Bowl, they had it done. Seattle was at midfield. It was over. It was well defended. So one of the things I like about sports documentaries is you forget a lot of these stories inside the stories. Like they talked about how Belichick wouldn't call a timeout because they were watching Russell Wilson looked unorganized on the field and Bill's sitting there watching him. He's like, I'm not bailing these guys out. I'm just going to sit here. And I had heard that story before, but I will say this to people on Deflategate, whether you like the Patriots or not, there is, there's, it's storytelling. 